In the last video, we looked at why activation energy is so important in determining rate. Collisions between molecules will only result in a reaction if their energy is greater than the activation energy. So what do we need to understand now? Well, we need to know what determines the energy of a collision. The measure we're looking for is kinetic energy, the energy of movement. The equation for kinetic energy is a half mv squared, half mass times the square of velocity. So a larger mass or a higher velocity will give an object more kinetic energy. Think about a car crash. There are two main things that affect how bad a crash is. One is the mass of the vehicles. Being run into by a semi-trailer is much worse than being run into by a hatchback. The other is the speed they're travelling at. High speed crashes are worse than low speed crashes. Both of these facts are true because for higher masses and higher velocities, more energy is involved. It's the same with molecules. Heavy, fast molecules collide with greater energy than light, slow molecules. Now, for a given reaction, we can't do anything about the mass of the molecules. It's fixed. So the variable we're really interested in is how fast the molecules are going. So let's explore the kinetic energy of molecules a little. You know from junior science that as you increase the temperature of a substance, the molecules move faster. This is the reason behind phase changes from solid to liquid and liquid to gas. But even within one phase, a liquid, say, as the temperature increases, so does the speed of the molecules. So if we perform a reaction at a higher temperature, it means that the molecules taking part in the reaction are moving faster, and so their kinetic energy is increasing, and their collisions are more violent. Here's the thing, though. At a particular temperature, not all molecules have the same speed. Some will be moving slowly, and some will be moving quickly. If you measure the speeds of molecules in a liquid or a gas sample at a particular temperature, you'll find that there will always be some that are slow and some that are fast. And since we know that faster speeds correspond to higher kinetic energies, we can produce a graph that shows the frequency of particles for all possible values of kinetic energy. This graph corresponds to a mathematical distribution known as the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution that has this particular shape. It starts at 0, 0, since there are no molecules that are sitting completely still, meaning their velocity is 0. And it peaks at some particular kinetic energy. This is the most common kinetic energy, or rather the energy that the largest number of molecules have. And then it tails off, since very few molecules will have extremely large kinetic energies. Now have a think about some mixture of reactants sitting at room temperature. In that sample, quite a few molecules will be travelling slowly. If these slow molecules collide, they won't react, because their collisions will not be energetic enough. However, some proportion of molecules may be travelling fast enough such that if they do happen to collide in the right orientation, they will do so with sufficient energy for the reaction to be successful. So we can redraw the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution to show that for some generic reaction, a certain proportion of molecules will have enough energy to react, while the rest will not. And the amount of energy that divides the haves from the have-nots, the minimum energy necessary for a collision to cause a reaction, that is the activation energy of that reaction. Remember, the amount of energy needed to break the reactant bonds so the atoms can rearrange. So let's think about reactions with high and low activation energies and what that means. Imagine two identical flasks of some reactant sitting on the lab bench. I'm going to draw an energy diagram on the left and a Maxwell-Boltzmann diagram on the right for each of them. The two flasks are at the same temperature, so they must have identical Maxwell-Boltzmann distributions. In the first flask, I'm going to mix up the reactant with something else, and it's going to undergo some reaction which happens to have a very high activation energy. So the energy diagram for this reaction could look like this. And on the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution, the activation energy would be up here somewhere. And you can see that in this case, only a tiny proportion of molecules have sufficient energy to, su to successfully react. So this reaction will proceed slowly. But now consider mixing in the second flask this same reactant with something that will cause a different chemical reaction, one that has a low activation energy. The energy diagram for this reaction looks like this and the activation energy would be somewhere here on the Maxwell-Boltzmann diagram. And you can see that because the minimum energy required is now much lower, 
a much greater proportion of molecules in the sample have sufficient energy to react, and so this reaction has a high rate. It proceeds quickly. So let's go back to our original question. What is necessary for a reaction to occur between two molecules? The essence of it is that they must collide with the right orientation and energy, and the chances of that happening vary greatly depending on the reaction and the conditions. As we said, many collisions may happen before two molecules collide energetically enough to surpass the activation energy and react. If successful collisions happen frequently, then the reaction will proceed quickly, which is the same as saying that the rate of reaction is high. If successful collisions are rare, then the reaction is very slow. In other words, the rate of reaction depends on how frequently successful collisions occur. So to get to the heart of the matter, we should now rephrase our original question and instead ask, what affects the chances of a successful collision occurring? And it turns out that the variables that affect the chances of a successful collision occurring are surface area, concentration, pressure, temperature, and the presence of a catalyst. And in the next video, we'll see how they do that.